Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next step. This step is going to be advanced 3D modeling. Within advanced 3D modeling, what we're going to do is create a 3D model. Uh, we're going to use the, well, as you can see in front of you, we're going to be creating the lamp and uh, side table from one of our projects that we've already done. We're going to then put that 3D model inside of an environment like a room, put like a little window or something like that. Um, and then we're going to add realistic lighting and textures and materials and shadows to the project in order to make it look like a realistic object uh, and like a photorealistic rendering. Okay, so as you can see, this is what we're going to create, but we're going to do this in three different videos. Video number one, we're just going to create the 3D model. Video two, we'll do the environment and video three, we'll do all the colorful rendering. All right, so we need to make this 3D model first. Okay. What you want to do is you want to open up <clears throat> our furniture assignment that we did from a couple weeks back. Uh, if you look in the description, you'll see that there is a Google Drive link there that has all the files that we use within that uh, shared folder. So in there, you can grab the furniture one in order to see the dimensions. Now, these are only dim dimensions for the front view, for the front of it. We don't really have the depth there, but as I'm going through this video, I'll tell you what that is and, and you know we'll get through it together. Okay. So I don't really have another sheet that tells you what the depth of this model is, but it's it's actually very simple. It's only about an inch and a half deep. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start a new file here. Um, I'm not going to draw this because you could actually go back to your own and just copy and paste that stuff in. So if you copy that and you go in here, we're actually going to want to put this on the front side. All right, because that's the front of the drawing. And we slap that in there. You're not going to want the lamp yet, okay? So let's get rid of the lamp, and I'll tell you why in, in a little while. Um, well, basically, this one is going to go back, and it's going to be square. And that one, if we took it and extruded it, that would be square as well. But we don't want it to be square. We want the top of the lamp to be round. We want the neck of the lamp to be a cylinder, and so on. So we're not going to do that quite yet, okay? But when you get this part, okay, if you need to, pause the video, go back to my furniture assignment. It's in the 2D assignments. And, and get to this point where you at least have this drawn, what you're going to do is you're going to take these lines right here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you're going to join those together. That should give you a 6 to 1. You're then going to take the bottom ones. Let's see if I can actually get that selected. That should be a 4 to 1. Uh, you'll take these lines, but you have to close the ends first. So close there, close there. And those four lines are going to get joined. That's going to be a four to one. And then the last thing is going to be the body. One, we got to put another double line here, two, three, and then another double line here, four. The knobs of the dresser are already closed shapes. They're already polylines because they are circles. So you don't have to do anything with those. So I do have to go from this point to here and here to here. That is a closed shape. Anytime you join something and, and you're going to want to extrude it, you have to have a closed shape. It can't be open. So that's a four to one. Okay. Now go back to the top. Go to the bottom right corner. We're in a 3D view. What you're going to do is you're going to take the top and bottom and the knobs. And you're going to move those forward by one sixteenth of an inch. Now, this is a small thing here. It's only a couple inches big. It's not to scale. Um, you could scale it up later by, you know, a, a number like 12, and that would make it rather than three inches wide, let's say it is, it would make it like three feet. Okay, so we could do that later. Maybe I will. I'm not really sure. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but for right now, it's only a couple inches big. You will then take the top and bottom and extrude those negative 1.5. So it's going to be an inch and a half deep altogether. And since we move those things forward by a 16th, they're going to be overhanging the top and the bottom by a 16th of an inch. That then tells you that we can take these knobs and whoops, and extrude those by negative 1 16th. So technically we didn't have to move those. We could have left them where they were and extruded them forward by a 16th. But regardless, that's not a big deal. Take this one here, extrude this by negative 1 16th. What that part's going to do is it's going to be like that little recession in here. 
uh, because the drawers have to have some kind of appearance. This is kind of like a Disney movie, okay? It's all about making it look um, like it's real, but it's not always, it's not a functional drawer, you know what I mean? It's just, it's making it look like it's a functional drawer. So that's a, that's a lot of the 3D modeling that you do is you're trying to make things look theatrical, all right? So anyways, that's going to be that recessed part that we have. And then this piece here is going to be the body. You're going to extrude that. Basically, it's one and a half minus a sixteenth, but you could also just click the back of here and it will extrude to that same depth. So if I go ahead and orbit now, you'll see that they're all even in the back. Okay. Now you need to decide, um, well, here, let's do this subtract first. We're going to do subtract from the body, that little intermediate piece there, and that's going to cut that piece out. Uh, the next thing you need to decide is you want to decide what it, when you do the materials, is all of this stuff going to have the same material? If this and the body and the bottom have the same material on them, then you can union these together. If they're not going to have the same material, then you don't want to union them because it's very difficult. Not very difficult, but it's hard to get them back apart. And obviously you can only have one material on them. Okay, So if I union those, Now I can put one material on there and it will spread on all three, okay, because it's no longer three, it's just one. Same thing with the knobs. Even though the knobs are not touching, I could do a union and select all four knobs if they're going to have the same material. And that makes them all basically one piece. So if I just drop it on one knob, it'll put it on all four. It makes it easier, okay? All right, now we're going to make the lamp. With the lamp, and then we're going we're gonna to make it out here, and then we're going to move it on top. What you're going to do is you're going to grab a rectangle, you're going to click on the ground, and you're going to do uh, dimensions, okay? With the dimensions of the rectangle, we're looking here. Uh, I need to be over here. This is one half inch, and we're going to make it square, so it's going to be a half by a half. So whoop, I guess i got to do that again. You could also go here and do at one half, comma, one half. Let me start like that. Extrude this up by an eighth of an inch and I know that because whoops right here you got an eighth measurement another eighth up is gonna be a circle that we loft to so this is actually a new tool that we're gonna use so what you need to do here is put a diagonal line across the top draw a circle on there that circle is gonna be a diameter of one eighth get rid of the line this is on that top surface now, but I want that to be above it. So take it, move. You can either do the middle of the circle. You can do a corner. It doesn't matter. You could do all the way out here. Just stay up on the green line and move that up by one eighth of an inch. So now it's floating above. Now a loft. Okay. If you go to this loft tool and you hover over it and give it a second, or, <clears throat> excuse me, give it a second or two, you'll see that you can take multiple shapes and loft those together in order to create a 3D model out of it, okay? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to loft this to the top rectangle here. But we don't have a top rectangle there anymore. What we have is just a 3D model below it, and you can't loft a 2D object to a 3D model. What you can do is put another rectangle on top of it, and now do loft and do 1, 2. And you'll see that it lofts it together. And it takes two enters, one which shows you what it looks like, and then two to save it in order to get that 3D shape. So that's a loft. Check it on conceptual. You'll see that it looks the way that we want it. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to match this circle again. So if I go here with the circle tool and I go at that center, I can click like that. That gives me that same 1 8 inch diameter circle. That's going to get extruded up 1 inch, 1 positive inch. And let's just move this over a little bit so they don't start getting in their, each other's way there. Okay. All right, next thing. Bigger circle. Let's go back to our drawing for a second. This is one half at the top and one inch at the bottom because you can see one half plus one quarter plus a quarter, or you can look right here for one inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to loft again. We're going to loft a one inch diameter circle up to a one half inch diameter circle. Okay. So we need two circles here. We're going to go one half inch radius or one diameter. It's up to you. You can type it either way. And then you can go one quarter inch radius or one half inch diameter. Same thing. Two circles at the same point. Take one circle. Use the move tool. Move this up by one inch. 
make sure you stay on the green line otherwise it won't hover right above it and then again loft click two shapes you see it loft together hit enter twice this lamp is now done now again you have to decide what pieces are going to have the same material and texture and all that together if the bottom piece and this let's go back to the colorful one if if this and that and that are all gonna have the same metal on them or whatever it is then you can union those together this is most likely gonna be something different so you leave that separate okay so I'm gonna do union and I'm gonna do these and hit enter I'm gonna leave the lampshade itself separate uh, later on it will be possible to put a light bulb inside of this light and then have that shine down on the table that's possible too but right now we don't need to talk about that okay the last thing we want to do here though is we're gonna to want to put a line from this corner over to this is kinda of hard to see so let's orbit this a little bit over to this corner because I want to put this lamp on the middle of the table perfectly centered symmetrical so then I'll do another diagonal line and now if you're not getting an endpoint here because something switched on you it looks like see look at my uh, my top back here that thing switched so let's go back to the top for a second and then the bottom right corner just reset your view and then zoom back in we can see the grid again here sometimes that does flip and I uh, there is a fix for it and I want to say it's um it has something to do with the uh, let me think about this for a second now UCS yeah so if you're having that issue I think if you go UCS and you click world um, I think that'll fix it for you but you won't be able to tell until you get into that situation again where you know you're orbiting and then suddenly you don't see the grid anymore okay um, but I th I'm pretty sure that's what the solution is all right so anyways you're gonna put a diagonal line on the bottom of that one that's a dummy line and you're gonna move all of the lamp from the midpoint of that line so make sure you're getting the midpoint of that bottom line if you need to orbit a little bit and then put that on the midpoint of the dresser or the side table now we have that in the middle reset our view if you're one of my students at this point you're gonna put 0.7 line weights on there you're gonna put your name one quarter inch text height uh, with whatever period you're in and you're gonna put that on hidden to print it out but of course check it on conceptual move it around a little bit make sure it looks like the right solid that we're looking for and that's it that's that 3d model all right so now this is part one you're going to want to go on to part two where I make the environment, which is going to be the bedroom. And then you're going to want to go to part three where we start doing the realistic colors and texture and lighting and material, you know, and shadows and all that. All right. That's it. Thank you for watching. See you guys in part two. Later.